Okay, welcome back there. My name is Tim Davies, and today we're going to talk about knife crime in the capital of the United Kingdom, which is London, and it's out of control. We need to talk about it. Uh, and really, we're going to talk also about values and standards, individual values and standards. And I'm going to tell you a story actually about how uh, a Frenchman recalibrated how the Royal Air Force thought about values and standards on the biggest squadron in the Air Force. Well, this must be going back about a decade now. A great guy is still. I still uh, listen to what this man says today. Very interesting man. Now, the reason I talk about knife crime in the capital is because although we've had a 15-year-old schoolgirl killed on a bus on the way to school by uh, a young man two years older than her, and this girl was standing up for her friend, an unrequited love story, it seems. However, um, two black, obviously black on black, which is pretty much the standard, black on black. We can say it because it's the truth. Um, even though that is, that should be the main story in the press. What are we doing? Young kids being killed. It's not the main story. The main story is a distraction story, and the distraction story oh, is one that adults should not be involved in. So I'm gonna try and talk to you briefly about this distraction story. It's rubbish. I'm gonna cover it real quick. I'm gonna throw names out there that you'll be like, oh, really? And I know I'm with you, I'm with you on this. In the comments, just tell me what you think about it because I think it's rubbish. Here's the thing. British comedian Jeff Norcott, funny dude, goes on a TV show to talk about male suicide all right and he's talking about it and on that program is a feminist by the name of eva oh god ava evans there you go i didn't know who the lady was um, but she's a feminist apparently and turns out she's a bit of a misandrist which is like misogyny but the reverse so it's against men uh, she works for a, a left-wing sort of news organization called politics joe that i don't really know too much about uh, it doesn't matter either way she made some disparaging remarks and tried to hijack the conversation a little bit. Now, however you feel about it, let's just roll with this because that's kind of pretty much the truth. I want to stick with facts here. Unfortunately, Jeff never really got his point across. Fine, happens. I think they were talking about the minister for men. Uh, there's a women's minister and there's a mental health minister, but there isn't a minister for men. Now, a lot of people are like, I don't want one and that's fine. I don't think we want one either, but some guys do and I get it. But more to the point, if you're talking about equality and you have a one for women, then you should have one for men as well. That's just called a fact, you should. If you want equality, if you really want equality, if you don't, then that's different, of course. We'll work with this. Anyway, what happened then is Lawrence Fox, leader of the Reclaim Party and former actor, went on DB News. This is how only in the UK this could happen, really. And then he said some, some disparaging remarks about the, this lady, Eva, uh, Ava, sorry. He said something about, I wouldn't shag, or no bloke would shag, which is typically British, you know what I mean? It's typically Lawrence, isn't it, really? It's what Lawrence does. And it was 10 o'clock in the evening, he'd had a glass of wine. Anyway, Dan Wooten, who was hosting him, uh, laughed about it. Lawrence got suspended from the programme. Dan got suspended from the programme. Calvin Robinson, the deacon, who I follow, is a good man. He got suspended from the programme as well. GB News, supposed to be this bastion of free speech, stumbling over themselves. I think somehow Connor Tomlinson from Lotus Eaters was involved in this. He made a comment. I think he was talking with this lady before in a separate program. I was down on Lotus Eaters last week talking about aviation, in fact, with Bo Dade, history bro. So you might see that come out pretty soon. The whole thing starts crumbling and you have to remember, if we're talking about this, we're not talking about young people being killed on the bus on the way to school. I'm a British man. That was a British young girl. That was a British man that stabbed her, even though he was a 17-year-old black dude. He's a young man, as far as I'm concerned. I know he's only 17, all right? He's a British dude, carrying knives on the bus, stabbing up people, and this has to stop. And when I mean it has to stop, it means the penalty of this not stopping is probably the, the actual fall of our, of our civilization, I think. It's, you cannot have this. The police are the biggest gang in, in London, and I mean this. And I know that some people don't like that term, but they are. And what I think we need to do is get that gang back in steaming buses, just being absolute zero tolerance of any kind of knife carrying whatsoever and really squared us away because you can't lock these people up because they haven't built up um, enough forethought yet to be self-critical, to understand the penalties involved with them using knives and everything else. It's just not something that is in their mind right now. So we really have to do something proactive to make them really fear about carrying knives in London. Now, this is it. This is the, what we should be talking about, but we're not. We're talking about hurty words from a feminist that a sensationalist man talks about on a program and then he gets suspended and then she goes on to become the victim and tell everyone how hurt she feels and how everyone's ganging up against and then we're all kind of typing stuff about this and the whole time another man was killed 
yesterday, in a half a mile from where the young girl was killed on a bus. Another man was killed in Croydon. This is a 30 year old man in the morning. Within a space of, I think, 24 hours was it? I can't remember, it might be a bit longer. This is something that we need to do something about. Now I did say I was gonna talk about values and standards. And what I see is a massive failure in adults to embrace their own responsibility of being part of a collective society. Back in the day, let's go back to when we were, <laughs> we weren't ever hunting dinosaurs, but then we were. We're hunting dinosaurs and we're living in a cave and the men are going out, men, hunting dinosaurs. Women are staying at home. They're gonna cook the dinosaur. They're gonna clean the cave, that kind of stuff. They're gonna make little defenses around the cave, or make the fire, all that kind of stuff, right? So shared stuff. The men would have to be fit enough to go out to hunt the dinosaurs. The women would have to be good enough. They'd have to practice the cooking, the skinning, and everything else. Everyone had a role and they had to step up into that role. This is what we did on the squadrons. You just kept training because you had to be good enough. That was the thing, you couldn't let yourself go. So everyone held each other to account. I don't think we're holding each other to account right now in society. I think it's probably even worse than that. We're kind of celebrating people being deviant towards society, laughing about it, in fact. People are laughing about all these kind of things. We're allowing people like Sadiq Khan to walk around telling us how much he's doing towards knife crime. When the man, I don't use this term lightly because I'm an adult, right? But the man is an out and out racist. There's no two ways about it with Sadiq Khan. I don't say that about anyone else in the public sphere, but we know that man is. He's an anti-white, anti-police mayor. He is a racist, there's no two ways about it. And I hate the fact that I've got to use that. Okay, fine, so what if he is? It doesn't matter, right? But what does matter is he's not able to do anything about this knife crime. I think that is a crime in itself. I don't think you should be mayor if you can't control your city. So we've got this thing going on then. Everyone's sacked from GB News. And you have to remember, they're trying to distract us as well from the online safety bill and everything comes out. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I just want people to understand. Now, we're on the squadron then, you know, if we're chatting about something else, we're not chatting about this. We're distracted is what I'm saying. I'll show you the fields over here because then we can, I can distract you whilst I turn the camera angle around. These are the fields, Herefordshire fields. I'm trying to keep where I live quiet in Herefordshire. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want people to move here. I want everyone to stay in the cities so we can have a quite a peaceful life out here. Look, the wind might check it out. Yeah, so when I was on a squadron, we weren't doing the best on the squadron because it was really difficult. We had a French pilot there called Patrick, a lovely bloke actually, Patrick. Still speak to Patrick today. He was a French guy, I believe he threw Mirage, something like that. Very good air combat pilot. The French are very good at air combat. Part, air, air combat. Could never really beat Patrick, even when I asked him to explain how he did air combat and he'd teach me and I still couldn't beat him. He was a very gifted man, still is. Still is a gifted pilot, he still flies. One morning, Patrick, who was on exchange with our squadron, he put his hand up in the Met brief. We have a brief every morning and he said, can I say something? And uh, I was in the room, I was like, yeah, yeah, what's up? He stood up, walked to the front, in front of probably about 60 people, 70 people, all pilots, a few admin staff, administrators. He said, I made a mistake yesterday. This didn't really happen on the squadron. People didn't really talk about these things. I did encourage it when I took over as standards and a lot more people did then. And you know, I do talk about my failings with alcoholism and everything else, but it wasn't really spoken about. And he stood up and he said, I made a mistake. And then he told us about the day before how he'd made a mistake with his fuel. He'd come back, he had to declare emergency because he landed below his fuel. And for the young people on the squadron, which were students to hear such a senior pilot and a highly regard highly regarded pilot and instructor actually hear someone put their hand up and say look i made a mistake for them to hear that really recalibrated them really rechanged their minds about how open they could be with their own failings i think we've lost that in society i think we're so worried about people attacking us for things we might be or might not be i mean people call me a racist the whole time they can do that if you want i probably am a little bit racist in certain elements because i don't understand other races as well as my own i have biases it's not racism. I don't actively stop someone getting something because of their skin color, but I don't understand the facial expressions, the pattern recognition. I'm, I didn't grow up in a black family. I grew up in a white family. And I'm sure if I had a, a, a black brother that grew up with me, he'd recognize white mannerisms over black mannerisms. It doesn't make you racist. It just means you, there's pattern recognition. But am I worried about being called a racist? Well, not really, because I'm an adult, but I know it doesn't really mean anything anymore to call someone a racist unless it is that it can't. But I know people do. So they're worried about saying anything. They're worried about saying that this knife crime in London is predominantly black on black. They're worried about saying that because people are going to go, ah, you're a racist. It's not, it's a fact, it's black on black. It's got statistics, isn't it? Look up statistics, it's black on black. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I think we need to have that conversation. I think we need to stand up and say, what kind of society do we want to live in? Personally, I want to live in a society where 15-year-old schoolgirls aren't stabbed to death on the bus in the morning going to school. 
I think that is a good society to live in. I honestly do. I don't think it's acceptable not to talk about this. I think we need to improve the standards of our own individuals. We need to stop having a go at each other on some GB News site because she said that and he said that when we're all in our, what, we're adults, we're supposed to be in our 40s or whatever, even if we're in our 30s, even if we're in our 20s. We shouldn't be having these conversations. Absolute rubbish. We shouldn't be having these conversations. We shouldn't be picking up on people being stupid. And I do it myself sometimes. I have a go at people on, on the internet or something and I throw out the word idiot. But when you, stu- when you start calling people names, you lose the argument. And we need to be having these arguments. They need to be mature arguments. They need to be, what are we going to do about this? It's not acceptable. We need to be open with our failings. We need to recognise the fact that the society has gone in a way we don't want it to be. Politicians aren't helping. If anything, they're keeping us more divided. I can't keep on making videos like this. There's going to be another stabbing scene. And these are British kids killing British kids. We need, to be, we need to be doing better and we're not doing good enough. Let me know in the comments what you think, guys. And the reason I say that is because the comments are a really rich source to adjust my perspective as well. I'll be very interested in what you say and I appreciate it. I'll throw this one out. Tim Davies, Fast Ship Performance.